Well, welcome to Strategic Advice. Uh, we're in season two, which is advice to uh, freshly minted PhDs who now have the envy are in the enviable position of having landed a job, and now they've got to figure out uh, some of the challenges of this new profession. And today, I am really thrilled to be joined uh, joining us today with Rosella Capella Zelinsky who is uh, at Boston University and has a lot of experience at what the topic is today, which are on the introductory classes. Now, I personally have not had a class larger than about 30. And so these big classes, I know quite often end up landing in the lap of the uh, freshly uh, assistant professor. And so Rosella is gonna talk to us today about that. But I will say that what I want to make sure I put a disclaimer, the views expressed today are our own and not those of our institution. So Rosella, welcome to Strategic Advice. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm thrilled to talk about intro classes. So you are either on the job market or you've just gotten a job and chances are you will be asked to teach an intro class. At some point, maybe not day one, but at least day two or year two or year three, that is part of what you apply for and what we do. These courses can vary depending at your institution. At BU, I taught intro to international relations, and those were upwards of three to 400 people. Okay, so things to consider as uh, coming into an intro class. This occurred to me a little while after teaching it. So the first thing you need to really remember is that your goal in an intro class is to sell the major. Often we think our goal is just to get through the day and get through the semester um, and provide students a wonderful teaching experience. Absolutely. But really it's about selling the major. And so for us, probably here in the social sciences who are gonna be watching this, history, political science, our majors are declining, um, especially vis-a-vis -vis STEM and the harder sciences. So we are often thinking about we need more majors and that's how we get more job hires. And so how do we get more majors is amazing intro courses. So it is in your interest to make this class the best it can be to sell folks to come and join your major. And in doing so, you also in that meeting that goal, sell people to come to take your other courses. So selfishly, teaching three to 400 people and doing a good job at that keeps your courses full for the upcoming years. Um, something I learned after doing this a couple of times, like I don't need to recruit folks to take my classes because I've introduced myself to so many of them. So number one thing is to sell the major. And part of the goal here, or let me say a secondary goal, is to ensure you cover enough materials for any follow-on courses. Some majors have the intro as a prerequisite. And so maybe certain faculty will want, you know, let's say um, writing, how to write a policy memo. That may need to be covered. Or certain theories in international relations, whatever it may be. So your first goal, making this fun and interesting for folks. Your second goal is figuring out what other faculty need to be covered in this course, if anything. Um, so how do you meet these goals? The first thing is recon. Do, do, some, do some intel here, do some recon and ask other students if you get a chance, depending on your teacher, what undergrads, what they liked and didn't like or would want from an intro course. Uh, ask the grad students who have TF'd for this course before. They are closest to the ground and have all the insights. They see all those students on their computers not paying attention. So ask them. They're a valuable resource. Um, and then, of course, ask your colleagues for best practices and what they would see. This course will absolutely, at the end of the day, need to be yours. But the more intel that you can do, uh, you can gather on making this successful, the better. Because you will have different climates. Everyone's going to be at a different type of university that values different things. So figure out what your university um, needs. Okay, so chances are your intro course will be freshmen and sophomores, depending, you know, you could have others, but that's probably going to be the, the majority of your, your students. So how do you get freshmen and sophomore to keep coming back? Keep it fun. Keep it simple. 
Keep it fun. Keep it simple. Packing in a course um, with too much material and too heavy reading is the first way folks are going to be like, nope, I'm out. Um, when I look at my junior colleagues and they're like, hey, can you look at my syllabus? The first thing I almost always say is too much reading. It's the first thing. So you really want to, especially for a freshman and a sophomore, think about readings that are easy to grasp, make them want to read more, um, and and that you know that they're not going to be overly confused about. So the more basic material, the better. So that's the first thing. Keep it simple. Uh, the second thing you really want to think about is having some fun empirical puzzles. Um, uh, the more theory, depending on what discipline you are, uh, but let me speak to for political science here, often we can be theory focused. That is important, but if you're a freshman, you're not going to necessarily see some value in a theory in the way that's not going to want make you come back. It'll keep that's important to learn. But they want to know, you know, why did Russia invade Ukraine? That is a big, that's the puzzle, you know, why have um, we increased white supremacy in the United States? That is gripping. They're like, oh my God, this is a big thing. You know, how is climate change going to affect stability in the international system, right? These, if you structure around these big questions that they want to know the answer to, and they want to understand how to answer them. And it is your major that gives them the special tools to understand these pressing problems. So if you design an intro course around these empirical puzzles of the of today that an 18 year old would care about, the more successful you'll be that they'll want to stick with you. So think about syllabus design, simple and engaging. Now, you also uh, let me give you some other advice. Often we do intro courses, we do a lot of tests. That's what we just, you know, we're used to doing. And we give a lot of exams, you know, you have a midterm, did they learn the concept? That's fine. But you want to make sure you have empowering assignments. What do I mean by an empowering assignment? You want to put them in the place of the policymaker and have them make decisions about how something should go in the world based on what they've learned. What I have found in my courses has been when they actually think, oh my gosh, I don't want to be a policymaker. I've, I've done my job. I've done my job because they see how complex the world is. And they're like, oh, because, you know, all of us have ego and we have, you know, biases. So we just think, oh, we know how the world is. But if you can empower them to make them feel good that they can do this and then also make them think, oh, my gosh, this is harder than I thought. They want to come back for more. Um. And this could be done just in class. This could be done uh, maybe in the way you design an assignment. Uh, typically in large, in um, more senior courses, I do simulations. I think that's really hard for an intro course. But if you can come up with a couple primary documents and give them a document packet, let's say three, four documents that are easy to read, they feel special. They're seeing something that they've never seen before when you use a primary source document. Um, so that already is empowering them. Wow, I'm in privy to information that only policymakers at one time saw. So that's the first way you can empower them. Second, you can select them in a way that leaves open a decision. Um, and that will allow them to, to the, but you don't give them the outcome, you leave them open to a decision. And so that allows them to say, what would I do if I were in this role? And then you can debrief them with the decision, say, well, why did you do what you do? What was constraining? So I have found even for your 18 year olds, you can do this. So don't think that's only for older class. It just has to be structured down. Um, and these are also great in-class assignments. Um, how else to make a class, an intro class engaging? We often associate intro class with 50 minutes, an hour of lecture. Folks really, we're not so good in our, maybe it's our screen time has been too much over the past decade. Maybe it's legacy effects from COVID. But getting lectured to for an hour often is too much for people. So what you want to think about is how I can successfully break that up. And you're like, wow, 300 people, there's no way I can do some really good class engagement with 300 people. That's too much. Or even 100 people. Maybe if I'm teaching an intro class of 25, and I, you can do that. But I'm going to say, no. I think you can do fantastic group work in an intro class. 
You can do some amazing Q&A in an intro class, and you can run these little small simulations in an intro class where they have a little reading packet. So really think about breaking up intro courses in beyond lecture. And of course, videos are your best friend. Everyone loves a good video. But beyond that, what kind of active learning can you do for this intro class period? Um, a couple other things. Uh, Phil and I will be doing one on teaching assistants soon, but uh, not just to tease that for a second. But let me also talk about managing large courses, because the likelihood is you'll be teaching either um, a, a, probably a, at least a 50 person intro course, if not much, much bigger, sometimes again into the hundreds. You want all of those students to not be knocking at your door in your office hours all the time. You want them to feel that everybody is in a, an equally equitable grading experience. So you want to make sure that you say, I understand that there's a couple hundred of you and one of me. I promise I have your back. So everyone in their own way feels special. And they're not just like one more, you know, pardon my metaphor, like, you know, a cattle on a cattle farm. They are each special. Um, and they're and that will then make the major special. These are people who care about me. And I'm not just in a, this packed in this multiple hundred person course. So make sure that you that they know that you are happy to meet with them at all times but also that you will grade equally. Maybe you have teaching assistants, but you're, everyone's on the same page with grading. No one's gonna be graded any different. Um, make sure that they know that they're there to succeed, that all assignments, you know, there's no tricks. You're here to help them, that you, you're happy with everyone getting an A, um, there's no curves. Make sure it's an even playing field so you're not creating stress about outcomes of assignments, but that they're there to learn. Because again, them making it fun and a learning environment focuses on the major and not just on the course. So there's all these little ways to make intro classes a better experience for all. And I can keep going, but I don't know if maybe Phil at this point has a question. Well, so this is a fascinating. I'll be honest with you. Uh, the topics that you covered up front, I didn't anticipate. I anticipated talking about, uh, you know, putting together lectures and all and how to get the syllabus. But I really liked where this went and particularly the emphasis on fairness. If you focus on fairness and people believe that they're being treated equitably, that reduces significantly stress and the amount of engagement that you have to have dealing with that. So I think that's a really important point. Uh, so since you didn't talk about it, the one question we have time for has to do with the balance between the teaching and the research. Mm -hmm. Have you seen any um, synergy in an introductory class and either your writing or something along those lines? Or, or is this just something that you have to just cut out that amount of time for? Great question. You know, this goes a little bit into syllabus design. And uh, something I didn't mention that I think is important is that when I design an intro syllabus, I look at all the other courses being offered in my department, and I actually try to design it, not all, all relevant, right? So in a political science, you have multiple subfields, but all the IR courses that are available. And what I try to do is make sure every single course is incorporated into my syllabus in some way, shape, or form. So I'll say, let's say, you know, I, I, I'm more of a strategic studies, security studies person. So I have a week for an intro to our syllabus on nuclear weapons. And I say, here are all the courses in my department being offered on nuclear weapons at the bottom of that syllabus. If you like this, go, go, go do more. Go do more. And that, for your own research, could be part of that. So maybe you have, um, you know, if, if I'm Phil, I have something on air power, uh, for example, right? Or something that you're, you're doing, you know, put a week on that. I think you are free to do that because... The more passionate you are about sharing this material, they, they they pick up on it. It's exciting. So I actually only try to put stuff on a syllabus that I'm really excited about, or I make I reframe it something that I'm really interested in. Because if I'm not interested in it, um, I'm not going to be able to do a good job presenting that. I had a professor in graduate school compared to this named Ian Lustig, and he imparted on us. Uh, the construct of evangelical in the sense of it means to spread uh, to spread the good word. 
So every time I go into a class, I have to be excited. And I'm going to spread the good word on this. And so that's the attitude I take in um, when I teach this. And it's a real privilege in a weird way to teach an intro course. I know we're thinking like, oh my God, I got to design a class that uh, is not my own. I didn't want to do. And it's for all of these people, but I know I need to do it. But it's actually, um, you got into this discipline and academia for a reason. You did. So think about what excited you on that and then bring that same excitement and joy to these folks. And that's how you kind of should approach it. Like that's, if this doesn't make me really kind of interested, then why am I doing it? So bring that to your syllabus. What, what has kept you in this business for 20 years? Um, and bring that kind of like fun energy to the, to, to teaching. Yeah, that's, I, I think I, I really like that emphasis because it, it's, it's so true that the excitement of the professor and the engagement is contagious. And the students will feed off that. If you come in, if you didn't want to teach this course and you show up, the students are going to be like that. That to me is the most important. Uh, even if you don't feel well that day, fake it like you're excited. Yes. You know it will be. Well, that's, what a fantastic topic. Thank you so much for sharing. I think this is going to be a, a really uh, important uh, interview for those who are thinking about putting together intro classes. So thank you very much for joining us today on Strategic. Thank you Advice. for having me. I'll see you all at Teaching Assistance. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, bye.